What's going on, world's man? Mr. Mac here with allhiphop.com. I'd like to welcome you to the mechanism. I am welcoming to the couch a uh, first timer, star of stage, screen, and every little boy's dream, especially if they're uh, watching those shows. We ain't going to get too far into that. Please Betty. state your name one time for the camera. Betty Idol. We have here Betty Idol. Uh, <laughs> now, now, people know you from Love and Hip Hop, mm -hmm. but you're a veteran. You've You've been around for a second. This isn't your first rodeo. Rodeo, no. Just your first time on screen. No. Well, I've never like acted like in a, mm -hmm. a TV show, but I've been, you know, doing modeling since mm -hmm. I was little. Then um, I was in like a commercial before uh, and just doing music pretty much. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, in the music industry. Now, most of the producers that I've spoken to, one of the things they enjoy most... Uh, they enjoy the best is being able to be behind the scenes being able to have all the uh the acclaim make all the money and still be able to go to the grocery store yeah but you're kind of trading that in to I do know. love and hip-hop like was does that did that cross your mind when you were when you were making a decision no um afterwards mm. afterwards i mean i do miss my freedom <laughs> mm -hmm. like no makeup going to the grocery store it's a drastic uh, change TMZ Sweatpants. is now watching, right? You got to be fabulous <laughs> at all times. Fabulous at all times because, you know, everyone wants to take a picture. And then I've been caught a few times. No makeup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sweatpants. You know, sundress. But, I mean, I'm still cute with no makeup on. Mm -hmm. I don't have to wear makeup all the time. But right. sometimes, you know, it's just like, oh, I'm shiny face. Like, okay. But no, other than that, like everyone wants to know like who you're with, who are you dating. They want to like know your like life. Mm -hmm. And certain things, well, I'm like super private. Okay. But now it's like I can't be private. Everyone wants to know everything. Because, what's what's like, something that you kept in in you know played close to the chest before that now you have to reveal to people because they insist on knowing. Well, I haven't revealed anything yet. Like, shoot, they want to know who I'm with. Mm -hmm. They're not going to know yet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, they want to know, like, about my family and stuff like that. And not yet. Right. You know, I guess whenever it's like the perfect time for me to, I guess, introduce everybody to the world. Because mm -hmm. my family is very, like, reserved and conservative. How did this happen then? How, how, how did you, how do we get this from a. Well, my mom is the little, she's the wild firecracker. Okay. But my dad is like, que? No, como? Like, he's like, not with all of that stuff. <laughs> but my brother, he's just like my dad. And then me, I'm like, I want to be in front of the camera, you mm -hmm. know? And that's how it happened. <laughs> it's, it's, did, it, do, you, do you think about this trade off when you're, if you're being mobbed or if you're being hounded for a photo or somebody's asking you a really intrusive question that they probably wouldn't have asked Betty Idol, the producer, but now they want to know from Betty Idol, the reality star. Do you ever think to yourself, man, I, this is not exactly, if I could switch this back, I might have. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of times that I'm like, damn it. Why did I do it? <laughs> why? What was the original thought process? Why? What brought you in front of the camera? I just was like, you know, it's a new day and age and mm -hmm. I want to put my music out there. Like, I want to, you know, put myself out there because mm -hmm. I'm, I guess, typically, I guess I would be, a lot of people want to say that, like, I'm kind of shy in a way in the studio. But I'm not shy. <laughs> I'm not shy. I don't know who these people are. Who I don't know. Before, honestly, because when I got on the show, I started to kind of open up a little bit more. So before, Love and hip hop brought you out of your shell, really? Well, you know, I'm on camera and then I'm meeting a lot of people, like just walking mm -hmm. around and stuff. So it's not like I can run, Facts. you know, not no seals. Yeah, I can't run. It's like, oh, hey. And then they like to ask questions. Like, mm -hmm. oh, what are you doing? Like, and then it's just like, you know, I'm more social now. So it just kind of like breaks, you know, it just kind of like opens up different, I guess, doors <laughs> mm -hmm. and um but i'm not shy when i'm like performing or like in the studio like when i'm recording it's like mm -hmm. i'm a you know that's just like a complete different person okay but then you know it's just i'm certain i'm kind of shy when it comes to like my personal life i guess okay well that's private that's not yeah shy. yeah that's, that's, well that's private. private i'm just more private i think that's is, the word. Is, correct word is the 
on camera Betty Idol the one that people would be used to seeing in the studio? People who have worked with you? Is this the kind of no. person you? No, I mean oh, no? I've gotten calls from like Mace and like two chains. They're like, "What the hell? I did not know Betty. You be turning up." I'm like, "No, not at all." Like you know, I explained to them the situation. <laughs> How far outside of yourself do you think the camera takes you? Some some people react that way when they're on camera. It's it, it brings out a different side to them. It's not necessarily. I wouldn't refer to it as being fake. I refer to it as a, it, it's a completely new side. And some people who jump on camera are as surprised by it as everyone else is. Would you say that was your experience? How far outside of yourself are you when the camera comes? Yeah, on? a little, but it's like different. Um, I know it's kind of weird, right? It's just kind of weird. But then again, too, like, there was liquor. I was drinking. Like, you know, I was drinking. I was getting mm-hmm. a little, like, ah, Which like, is always whatever. something else. Yeah, so. Have you had the moment where you saw yourself on camera and went, God, I can't believe I did that? No, I just was like, why was I sitting like that or something? <laughs> <laughs> why would, I don't like that angle. Mm. But, um. I mean, I don't really have any regrets. The only, re- I guess, the regret that I would have is um, not being more in control okay. of like the situation, like um, really just pushing, like just kind of showing like people, like, hey, this is who I am, and this mm-hmm. is like my stuff, and this, you know, instead of kind of just going with the being flow. a cog in the story. Yeah. Like, if you do the research. Betty Idol was a, you were considered a successful producer and and songwriter before this thing came around, which is why I think so many of my producer friends couldn't understand why you did it, like why you would step out. But you said you wanted to use it as a vehicle to push your music. Has that happened more? Are you getting more interest from people? Because you were already high level to begin with. People were, you had some pretty A-list people hollering at you to begin with. So now... Um, as far as music, like I'm, you know, that's has not anything going changed? Anywhere. Has it picked up? I mean, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. that's been pretty great. Mm-hmm. But I, I wouldn't say because of the show. I would just say mm. because I just have a really good worth ethic, worth work ethic, <laughs> Rick. <laughs> as opposed to a work vocabulary. ethic, you know. Um, I'm clowning. But, hey, <laughs> I'm, I'm, cl- I'm clowning. I'm clowning. But um, yeah, so I have a good work ethic. So I'm always like working, Mm -hmm. but as far as the show, it it just, I guess it would bring, it brought other opportunities. Like, I guess awareness, it Mm -hmm. like pretty much like let people know like, oh wait, that's Betty Idol, you know, Mm -hmm. like that's the girl that sung all those songs, you know? Right. What does it take to, uh, what, what do you need to see in an artist that makes you, you know, I can definitely make something with that person. We can make some magic. Well, their grind one mm-hmm. and their ambition and the talent, you know, if they really have it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of people that are like, oh, yeah, I can sing, I can rap or I can do this and I can do that. But they don't want to write. They don't mm. want to work. They don't want to fly. They don't want to do anything like they're like, OK, well, you're going to put me in the studio. I'm like, uh, I I built the studio in my closet. Like, <laughs> how do you mean you don't ever, like, you don't have a song, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I have to hear their music, their style. And not, I'm not saying that everybody has, like, a specific style and, like, they're just, like, ready to go right off the rip. Because, mm-hmm. like, you know, a, like, a diamond in a rough, like, can always be, like, you know, shined and, like, made beautiful. Polished up. Yeah, you know? So it's, like... And it took me a while to like actually, and I'm still trying to figure out which sound I like better of mine's because like I have so many different sounds. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess it's just like that. Like if the person is just really hungry and really wants it, like, you know, like you can see it. You can see how badly that person wants to make it. And um, so pretty much just talent and ambition. Yep. Okay. Well, you know, you're going to get flooded by people who claim they have both. Well, you know, real recognize real, right? <laughs> okay, we're back to that. Heard, never heard that one since the 90s. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's break out those old slang terms, why don't we? Um, okay, is, is there any way you can describe to people exactly what it is you do for those who may not be completely aware? 
not exactly a producer, but kind of, we all know you're writing. Like when, when you hit in the studio, what is it that they're looking for you to do? Um, write mm-hmm. and sing. Mm-hmm. Um, I can kind of rap a little bit, but it's just kind of more like a singy rappy kind of thing. Like I'll write it. Right. <laughs> I'm not a freestyler. I'm not going to go in there and spit bars, right. but, um, yeah, write. Uh, I, I write very, like I can write like, um, Pretty much like any style. Like I wrote a country song, mm. you know. Mm-hmm. So ghostwriting is not that big of a taboo for you, but you're writing mostly for singers. What do you think about it when it comes to? Oh the no, rap- I've written for a rapper before. His actual bars or his yeah, hooks like or- his bars. Like oh, I wrote. Wow, it. <laughs> that's deep. Yeah, do like you- I wrote like his whole um, mixtape. Oh no! Yeah. I doubt he. You want to tell us who that no. is? Yeah, I, I, I'm not gonna. <laughs> Not going to press you. So do you think that people who write their own material 100% deserve a little more credit than someone who gets help? Yeah, I do. You know, I mean, there's a lot of writers that don't get credit and they're, it's their work. Like, mm-hmm. it's like painting, you know, like, right. it's your art. Um, and of course, there's like, you know, there's the artist that could, pro, you know, project it better than mm-hmm. the writer. So they get their credit, too. Mm-hmm. It just it's just like all a big masterpiece, you know. But if a guy is writing 100 percent his own stuff as compared to someone who's got like a team, you ever look at that guy and be like, damn, like, that's a lot of damn. I mean. I get it. <laughs> I'm like, just curious. You know, I'm like a curious. rapper, I guess. Yeah, sometimes, like, before I used to look at it like, damn, like, you mean writing all your bars? Like, mm-hmm. What's going on here? You're a rapper. Like, you're supposed to, like, write your bars, you know? Um, but then again, too, like, a hit record, like, if you have a few writers on a hit, like, it's a hit. You can't deny it. Like, right. You know? Because, like, being in the studio, um, you'll have people in there, like other writers, and... Sometimes it takes like a few other writers to make that one song Mm -hmm. that actually like blew up, you know? Mm -hmm. So teamwork makes the dream work. (laughs) Back to the cliches. (laughs) And we're just moving further and further back. Like now we're in the eighties. I think I saw that on like Saturday morning cartoons or something. (laughs) So what, what's the collaboration process? Like, do you ever get into it with any other art? Like I can imagine there's a big team, but they also say too many, uh, too many chefs in the kitchen, you know, ruins the soup. That's another one from the 80s. Oh. Uh, so how how do you avoid, um, you know, just when the collaboration is going wrong, somebody insists on having it their way, but you really got to have it your way and it's you're not meeting in the middle? Well, then that's where you have the producer. The producer's like, nah, that's not hot. <laughs> like, move on. Tiebreaker. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, too, oh, and then, too, like, um... For instance, like if I'm writing with another writer and they come up with like a melody or an idea and I have a different melody, I'll be like, oh, okay, I'll listen to theirs. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be like, okay, well, I have an idea too. Like, this is my idea. Right. You know, and then I'll be like, oh shit, that's hot. Like, go Mm -hmm. lay it down. Or, and then vice versa. Like, I'll be like, actually, I like your idea better. Like, you know, we'll stick with that one. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, like you're working together, like you're building the song. Now, I've, I've, we've interviewed... There um, are some selfish writers, though. Oh, okay. Well, all right. There's some selfish ones. Made a, made a face for that. <laughs> because they are. They're the ones that, like, think that, oh, because, like, I got, like, two hits under my belt. Like, I'm the shit, and I know exactly what to do, and everything that I write is hot. Like, no. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not always going to be hot. You just have to humble yourself and, like, understand that somebody else is going to have something hot, too. Is there sexism in in your field? We've interviewed a, a, a gang of female rappers who will always tell you. I mean, you, a lot of them don't like to lean on it. Some of them don't even like it mentioned. But they they are always the behind the scenes. If I was a guy, I wouldn't be dealing with X, Y, and C, A, B, and you know, A, X, Y, and Z, A, B, and C. You know, oh, one, two, and three. Like, I wouldn't. These wouldn't be my issues if I was a guy. Do you? Do you? Mm. Especially being you know pretty and no. you walk in there well, you know you walk in there and people look at you and think one thing and oh yeah i mean I, I mean i've been like recording since i was 15 okay so like i've felt the heat since i was like 15 because mm-hmm. like i matured fast i guess 
Uh, <laughs> sorry. 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 On, on behalf of. But the, I had braces. That probably didn't. It didn't help. No, I, no. I doubt it would. I don't think anybody was looking <laughs> it didn't. below above but, the, um, Yeah, we're we're sorry. We're on behalf of guys. We're sorry. Yeah, but yeah, I I think that it's a little tough for girls. I mean, and I know that a lot of guys say, "Oh, it's easier for girls to make it," and I don't, I don't, I disagree. Because it's like, no matter what, like you'll always get one asshole who doesn't look at your talent, and he just. What looks at your body or he's just mm-hmm. looking at one thing and then if mm-hmm. you don't like he's like nah, i'm done like whatever i move on to the next girl you mm-hmm. know and i mean that's why i tell like a lot of girls like you know just put your foot down and like i guess be a b-i-t-c-h who cares mm-hmm. and like just i don't want to say like be like nasty with it but like you know just like keep your Keep your what is the word? Uh, darn it. <laughs> Give us some um, Take your time. We can edit. Okay. It's the what's that word? It's like your integrity. Keep your integrity. Mm-hmm. You know because what someone's not going to see with you, like the next person will definitely see. And then when like you blow up, you're gonna be like, mm, you know, you mm-hmm. should have been handling your business. Instead of thinking with, you know, whatever. Right, right. Now you missed out. Now we're over here making millions. Does <laughs> it, does it, I, I've, and again, this is coming from the questions that I've asked and some of the answers that I've gotten. Some girls, uh, they want to be extra forceful. Some women have told me, well, I just cover up when I know I'm going to be around guys. I just make it a point to dress this way when I know I'm going into the studio because I don't want to have to deal with the headache. I could fight that fight, but I don't really want to, you know, I don't want to. It's just frustrating. It's draining. I don't want to deal with that when I'm going to. I just cover up. So I'm. you don't seem to have that uh, Mm -mm. issue. You're you're out here dressed summertime fine, just walking around. And you still are you still managed to you you can still get the seriousness out of people that you go to work with. Do you is this the normal attire for the studio yeah. where you go in? Nice. I mean, I I dress however whatever I feel like dressing that makes me feel comfortable and I like to look the way that I like to look. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um I feel like the people that I work with, they respect me for my talent and they're not going to like, you know, push on me like that. Mhm. This is the new ones that try, you know, but then you have to put them in their place and then they understand like, oh, that's little sis. Gotcha. Okay, I get it, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, now put on my Sherlock Holmes hat. I'm going to assume you're not single based on some of the things I saw in the show, based on some of your answers here. I'm going to assume that there is a guy. There is some special guy. There's a special guy. A special. Per- OK, because I was going to say a special person. You never know these days. Yeah, uh, you know. No, there's a special And you're guy. in Atlanta, so there's no telling. Oh, uh, yeah, the, the, I know. But, but no, I'm going to say now, how does he deal with because now you're out here now before you were, you know, maybe one of the industry's closer kept secrets. You know, it was Betty Idol. You didn't necessarily see the face behind the name. But now everybody knows what the face looks like. And everybody <laughs> knows what everything looks like because they, they see it on the show. Yeah. And now it's walking back and forth. Of course, oh and now here come all the basketball players and the football players and all the, you know, all the other athletes who are, hey, yeah. hey, Betty Idol. Hey, why don't we make some music? And I don't own a studio. Let's oh. make some other kind of music. Let's, let's, you know, <laughs> why don't we make a show when I don't have a camera? Let's, uh, I, I got a cell what? phone, though. Why don't we do something? You know, uh, oh my God. <laughs> granted, I don't know what the lines sound like. But this is just me freestyling. What? How did? How is? How does he deal with this new ride? This new ride and this new evolution and this this new wave that you're on. Um. Well, he's very secure with himself, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, he trusts me. And he's a busy man too. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's like you know he's not just like waiting around for me or whatever. Right. Right. So it works. He wants to see me like succeed. Mm-hmm. Very supportive. That's what's up. That's what, it, been a while. Been kicking it for a minute. Like yeah, like a few months. Months. That's yeah, not a minute. this is not like I. W- you know, I was not like in a serious relationship for a while because like my last boyfriend, it did not like end great. Mm. Yeah. Did work get in the way? Uh, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. He was like, "Oh, why do you have to stay at the studio? Like for this is date night." I'm like. <laughs> Like, you got to go to the studio, too. Like, Whoops. You know. Another artist. 
He's a producer. Okay. Um, but he's a great guy. He's great. It just didn't work, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I wasn't in a relationship for like a while after that. And then um, I just dated, you mm-hmm. know, like mm-hmm. dating or whatever. But like I've been like talking to this guy for like a little bit. Uh, have you locked it in yet or is this, are we still in the talking phase? No, we're like, you know, we speak every day. Oh, that sounds uh, kind of serious. It sounds like. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. All, all right. I'm. I'm just asking. You know, you I would, take a lot of heat off I yourself if say, you answer this the right way. I would say that like we're working towards like being like an item. And you're 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 happy with the direction. You're, yeah. You're, you're content and how things I'm are content. going, and he's doing the right thing, and you're so you're doing the right thing, and you're coasting towards the right thing. Yeah. It, is he also an artist? Is he? No. So is he outside of the business completely? Yeah. Is that the new is that the new model? I've heard uh, people in this field telling me left, right, and center. Well, don't date anybody who's also in the business. But then they tell you, well, you have to date somebody who's in the business because those are the only kind of people who are going to understand. That you've done. I mean, both. he's not like in music. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, no, no. Um, I I don't know. I'm just kind of like on a new wave. I guess. Are you off artist and yeah. creatives completely? <laughs> yeah, creative in a different way, you know, but not creative like in my kind of creativity what can you tell us what his field is in general you don't have to look what he does but what the field is just is, you know athletic <laughs> per se <laughs> oh an athlete what he's always an athlete no he's not an athlete i would swear it was J.R. smith if he wasn't already married no he's not an athlete mm, maybe an owner what do you think coach could be. Uh, I don't think he's like a trainer. Could be a trainer. No. He's not a trainer. Man. Basketball, baseball, football. I used just said to just name the field. <laughs> I'm still looking for the field. It could be a soccer field. Could be a football field. Could be a baseball <laughs> field. I'm still looking for the field. Doesn't change. I'm still in the parameters of my question. It's there somewhere. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll 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 leave you alone. But. You're suffice to say you're off the market. You're you're content where you are. You're not looking for any more suitors, and you're just kind of moving ahead. Do you create better when you're in stable situations at home? Do you find it's a little more, or do you feed off the conflict of you know how does that work out for you? Mm, you know, I would say like a lot of my really great songs came from my relationships. Okay. Um. It, it's so weird. I know, but like it, it actually gives me something to write about, like my emotions. I don't know if I don't know if it's because like I'm a Gemini and I go up and down a lot, like mm-hmm. I'm all over the place. But um, yeah, like I like to fall in love. Okay, okay, very cool. Well, yeah. uh, congratulations. <laughs> Like, thanks. I'm not in love right now, but I like. Oh, to fall. why would you say that? He's gonna see this disrespectful you it's got, new we're you, not in love i mean got, i don't but you didn't have to say that just got finished talking him up and now all of a sudden well, i'm not in love yet <laughs> you know if a guy hears that it kind of means to him well you're like you can go i'm not in love yet you can go oh my god <laughs> look what you've done no fix i mean it, you it, know it, we're it, still it, like it, figuring it. it out right now fix it fix it i mean fix you know it, he's it. a special 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 somebody to me golf clap Golf clap. Well, he well has done. a special place, like right here, <laughs> on her T-shirt. No, right inside, <laughs> inside of my, you know, I, I messed my right boob. under the left boob. We got yeah. you. We got you. We got you. Um, there's been a recent controversy about lyrics and about writing. Um, little Yachty went on uh, Hot 97 and said, "If I want to make a whole song where all, I, where all I say is one word, you know, people aren't doing." rapping like ghost faced anymore and you know only old people get mad at the fact that the music is evolving now i'm assuming you're not 19 anymore no but what are your what's your as a writer what's your take on that i mean i think music evolves like with the times like you know it's not like anyone's making music like the 20s right you know like rappers are it's a new day and age. Like, you know, you're not going to have, like, the Jay-Zs and the... Well, we have them. I mean, there's, there's a few, 
there's, there's a, a few, lot. There's a few. I mean, you know, there's a few that are like the Jay Z's, right? In the ghost face, but mm-hmm. it's not like they're. There's a few of them that are on like, you know, on the radio. But then there's mm-hmm. a lot of them that are still like underground. Mm-hmm. But I think everyone kind of likes the more uh, repetitive songs. Oh, uh, okay. The ones that they like. It just pretty much is like really based on the beat mm-hmm. and like a really catchy hook mm-hmm. and then just a very simple flow <laughs> mm-hmm. so they can like, you know, sing along to it. It's very nursery rhyme. Mm. Is I'm that, so sorry. It, that, that, it's, it's the truth to me. I, I don't I don't disagree with you. You know, if that one word in a whole song thing ever comes around, I'm going to put you out of business. Mm, yeah it's, it's not necessarily a good look for the writers you know i mean but you know what it's just like you know music is still always going to be music like music it always like good music always touches your soul and that's just an undeniable like great song mm-hmm. anybody will go and get that song no matter how old you are right from like a little kid till like you know a like a grandma or grandpa you know they'll always recognize like oh wow that song like does something to my soul like it feels really good like i love that song no matter who you know no matter what age or whoever is singing the song like or even if it was made in the 20s exactly you know like there's still songs like i have a little brother he's two like my mom was like playing like michael jackson the other day and he's like singing to it and then he was singing cut it cut it like that's like his favorite song he Mm. literally was singing it I mean, it's not a great, you know, like for the words for my two, you know, like my two year old little brother for him to be like over there talking Yikes. about cut it, cut it, cut it. <laughs> Yikes. Like, hey, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but, you know, 